Hey, welcome back to the table. Guess what we're doing today? We are going to be doing Escape Plan, which I did not even realize had solitaire rules, but it does. So we're gonna give that a shot today. Um, I've played this game multiplayer a couple of times, so I can tell you it's quite a fun game. Um, it's a Lacerda game, so it's got all of the flair he has um, in games. Uh, the one thing, if you're familiar with his games, is he usually has, um, you know, if a player does an action, another player reacts to it. Um, that is the only thing that's pretty much missing from this game. But everything else, uh, this game is full of tough choices, and you never have enough actions to do what you want to do. Um, all that usual stuff. So, <clears throat> uh, I'm going to go through a quick setup. If you're looking for uh, just jumping into the play, uh, jump to video two. Uh, that's my usual style. I will go real quick through components and setup. Um, we're going to focus on solitaire, but the multiplayer is pretty much the same. Now, um, <clears throat> there's a video out there by uh, Gaming Rules. I think the guy's name is Paul. He's got a British or Australian accent. Um, awesome video he did. Uh, you'll even see uh, me compliment him in the comments somewhere. Uh, I cannot explain the rules better than he could. However, he did not cover solitaire. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do. And that's why I felt there was a niche for a video here. Uh, maybe um, somebody's already done solitaire on Board Game Geek, I don't know. Um, I've sort of stopped uploading to Board Game Geek because um, uh, is, I'm actually very close to having enough subscribers to start thinking about getting paid. Um, but uh, I don't know, I'm just tired of the comments and the negativity uh, that comes with doing videos like these. I just want to help you people and I just want you guys, you know, you're welcome to join me at the table, but I'm not begging anybody to. So um, anyways, you always have my permission to upload my series to Board Game Geek, uh, but uh, I'm starting to shy away from uploading it myself uh, just because I don't want the negativity that comes with it. Uh, there's always somebody. And um, anyways, back to the game. Uh, let's get going here. So um, the game has a, quite a big board. Uh, it's, it's very empty, but it'll start to fill up with these city tiles. As you can see here, there's going to be some city elements. And um, let's go real quick through components and setup. The first thing you need to do is just set aside your money. You're going to have these handcuff cards. They don't actually say anything, but they, they have a specific purpose. Just set them off to the side. You're going to have two sets of exit tiles. You're going to have these police cards. There's six of them. I've already shuffled them. And then you just put them right over here. Uh, if you're really crafty, you can make it so it fits the image perfectly and doesn't even look like there's cards there. I'm not that crafty. I don't frankly care that much. Um, the uh, escape plan cards, you're going to shuffle. And you're going to take one for yourself and then one for another player, um, and it is going to be the lieutenant player, this guy that you see right here. So I'm just gonna set it right here underneath his picture. Everything else is really out of the game, so I'm just gonna set it up over there. Uh, this is just a reference card, but it's a very handy one you're gonna need for the end of the game, so just set that aside. They give you two copies because it's a five player game. Um, this, uh, there's one for every player. Uh, hugely helpful, especially this side. Uh, we're going to be using it ourselves because I always um, miss the symbology because there's symbols everywhere. And this is just a nice uh, bulleted list of what you do at each location, which is my style. I'm an engineer by trade. I love bulleted lists. I hate English literature. So, um, <clears throat> uh, so that's what we do. We're going to do that. Um, this is a little uh, description. Uh, you can start with a player power and a mission card. Um, I actually have not played with these yet, but um, they seem really neat. Uh, but they're variants, and so we're not going to play with the variants. Um, I just have a baggie uh, with the player powers and the mission cards set aside, so we're just going to set those out of the game. Uh, these are player shields. Obviously, if you're playing solitaire, you don't need to hide your information from other players. Um, you are going to start with two S tiles. 
basically they just need to both be pointing the same direction, up or down. I do not have a preference. So I'm gonna put them both in facing down and then we just flip them over like so. And so this will be the start of the game for us. And I will get into that in a second. All right, I have a baggie of components. Uh, some of these are upgraded Kickstarter deals. I couldn't tell you which ones were upgraded and which ones were not. I think almost everything you see here has been upgraded. These are extra, extra action discs. Um, don't use them right away, but you will use them as the game goes on. So just set them off to the side so you can easily grab them. These are uh, motorcycle gang members and they go on a spot on the board that actually has a picture of motorcycle gang. So we put those there. And then we have some, uh, some gas cans, uh, which look like these. And they go here where the gas symbol is. Um, and then another action disc. This marker is the turn track. On, um, uh, we'll go through it in a second, but just put it here at the top. And we have a shop, which is here. And so you just have to put your items uh, on the shop. The orange ones are, it doesn't matter what order they go in because they all cost the same. Just make sure you put them on. And, and as you can see, there's a limited number of them. By the way, all components per the rules are limited except for money. So uh, if you ever run into a situation where you're playing a five player game and all of one particular thing is purchased, well, sorry, Charlie. Okay, these are safes and we'll explain those in a second. Set them off to the side. Uh, these with the little wrench are actually what's called fixers. Uh, you don't have to shuffle them or anything because they're freeform, meaning you get to go through the entire deck and, and pick whatever you'd like. They go over here in the corner where the wrench looking symbol is. Oh, and you can knock them over too. It doesn't matter. Um, okay, this is the safe house section. And, and then uh, just to finish our setup over here, I got some more safes and you do need to make sure you don't remember what they are. The order does matter. Uh, so you should shuffle them. Okay, so there's your three sets of safes. And then we have a stack of these and I will come back over to here. All right, so this is safe house one. So we're gonna just put it there. This is the disco. There's the symbol, you just match it up. The art gallery. This is a diner, or I'm sorry, cocktail bar, a gym, a restaurant, safe house two, safe house three, and then I always call it Domino's Pizza, but it's a gambling casino. Um, okay. Then we have these uh, keys. So you just need to grab them randomly as best as you can. And there's three keys per safe house. And even in a five player game, these are limited to three, which uh, is very interesting. Okay, <clears throat> all right. So that is pretty much the game board set up. And now we got a few other things to take care of. So we're gonna move the camera to here. This is the contact board. So these are contacts that you're gonna find throughout the game. You know, they're pretty much all going to be helpful to you. However, they don't do anything for free. So, um, so what you do is you shuffle them, shuffle pile goes here, and then you just, uh, I think there's room for seven. I didn't take the time to count, but you just fill up the board. And these are anytime somebody takes one, or discards one, uh, you automatically refill this. This board's always full. So don't worry about any weird rules there. Uh, with the solitaire game, you do have to play a little bit of shifting because uh, the AI will always grab from the rightmost one. And so you do have to shift everything to the left or to the right. I mean, 
And um, uh, it doesn't matter which way you shift, you just gotta be consistent about it. And um, so you do have a little bit of that you gotta manage, uh, but beyond that, it's okay. <clears throat> All right, so let me get you situated so you can see my player board. All right, I'm gonna just spill everything. It's gonna be a little bit off camera, but I'll be grabbing them one at a time and showing you where they go. Okay, the first thing I wanna show you is if you have the Kickstarter version, you're gonna have these like crystal looking cubes, they're, they're plastic, and um, the wooden cubes. Um, it's been our experience that while this is nice upgraded bling, the wooden cubes are far superior uh, from a color perspective. Um, when this goes onto the board, amongst all the other player colors, they sort of get washed out by the light in the room, and they're actually a lot harder to distinguish who's who. Uh, I'm not saying it's impossible. Uh, I'm not being that daft. Um, but I'm telling you that this is far more superior than that when you're comparing player colors. Um, we just found that this is uh, a better component. Uh, this was a, a stretch goal that uh, I frankly think they could have just saved their money on. Um, but you don't need both. You just need one set or the other. So I will be putting all of these back. And yes, I probably should just find a bag and set them all aside, but I let the players that are playing with me choose. And some people do like the bling. I mean, you got a stretch goal, you paid money for it. So you want to use the upgraded components and some people like the, the crystal-y look of them. Um, but anyways, uh, this is your income track. This represents how much income you would make at any given time. These cubes are gonna be going out for various reasons and then your income's gonna gradually decrease because I haven't even explained what the point of the game is yet, but I will get there. Um, so player bag, uh, those are gonna go back in the bag. If you have a basic version, you're only gonna have, I think, the cubes, so no worries there. This is your player marker. It's gonna start on the board, so we'll just set it up here for now. Uh, these are black cubes in the basic game. They look like stars here. The upgraded bling is actually just fine. Uh, black cubes would have been just fine too. Uh, they go right here on your player board. There's uh, two stars, one with a plus, one with a minus. It's for tracking your notoriety gains or losses. And um, you just put them here for now. Okay, then you're gonna have uh, these. These are called asset tokens. And there's gonna be some that have uh, little, these are cup symbols, the stars. So you're gonna have three with the cop symbols. Uh, that one also has a cop symbol, but don't, <laughs> I know it's confusing. Um, so these three are a set, and then this is by itself, and then you have these three are a set. See, there's three types of cops in the game. There's a black cop, a blue cop, and a red cop, okay? This one's a, a, all three cops all at once. So anyways, these you just put up here in any order. Um, it doesn't matter what order you start the game because at any point in the game you can just change the order you want you can move them around there but the point is, is that the three cops go on the white track these three go on what's called the contact track and then this one here uh, goes over here uh, there's there's a section here this one I know you probably can't see from far away is a uh, it says five bucks and uh, we put that there okay that's how you start this is a, you know, basically a bandage. You start with one of those, and these three are wound markers. Um, they actually did put a symbol in them, which is sort of neat, but it's not necessary to have the symbol facing up. I just do it because I can. These two discs go where the gang markers go in your corner. These two are gonna go on the board, so I'll put them there. And then this one is a sunshine or a moon. This is your rest marker. <coughs> you can rest once per day and you put that there. So this stays empty. This is your extra turn. That's where these go as the game goes on. Okay, uh, we'll get into those in a second. And uh, let's finish the, the setup. The AI, there's two players, two AI bots. There's, um, uh, I think her name's Sandra. Um, you uh, basically get out another player's pieces and you get out exactly these pieces and nothing else. Okay, so you're gonna get out her nine uh, cubes. You're gonna get out her little player marker. 
you're gonna get out her two other board markers. And then these are gonna be black cubes in your base game. Uh, you get those out and that's it. Everything else from the player bag stays in the player bag. This is, this is reverse Vegas. What, what, what happens in the player bag stays in the player bag. Okay, so um, <clears throat> then this is a Lieutenant, I don't know, Bob. We'll just call him Bob. I, I know they name him in the, in the game. I don't remember it. Um, same exact components. However, uh, the one in diff interesting difference with Bob, uh, just so you know, this, is, uh, this girl here and the rules that she does is identical to the two-player game. So if you play a two-player game, you're going to play a three-player game, basically, where one of them is going to be a bot. So now we're playing a solo game where we're going to have the two-player bot plus another one, another bot that's just for solo play. Okay? So the two-player bot does not use a board, but this guy, Lieutenant Bob, will use a board. So, so we're going to, um, first of all, those are board components. And I don't remember where these cubes go, so I'm just going to put them there for now. And um, these do go on here, like so. So, uh, so Bob actually gets his own player board, which is interesting. Um, he actually has a lot more dynamic. Um, just so you understand, uh, this is going to have three players with the two bots, but it's really you versus Bob. So this little lady here isn't really going to score points or be a factor at the end of the game. She's just going to do things throughout the game to either harass or whatever. She's gonna operate as a player. It's Bob you're up against. You need to beat him, okay? So that's the important thing. Um, all right, so talking about that reminded me of these few things and I forgot what they were. Um, I was talking about how, oh, yes, I forgot a very important point. This is a double-sided game board. So you need to pick the side that says one to three players, okay? It will say it right here underneath the uh, businesses. Um, if you pick the four or five player side, that's great, but it's not gonna work for a three player game. Okay, so game board pieces. All of us start on the hospital, which is what this is. This, uh, this big circle with the but the medical symbol is the hospital. Okay, so we're all gonna start the game there. I will explain the terrain and the businesses in a second. Um, and then we all have these, okay? So uh, in a two-player game, uh, Sandra here is always the third player in turn order. Uh, in a solitaire game, uh, whoops, I grabbed the wrong one. In a solitaire game, Bob is always player two. So that means we are always player one. That's to start the game. And there's a, it's a little bit of a shaft, to be quite honest. This is one of those games where you actually want to start last. Um, because um, uh, what's going to happen is, is we're going to do some things, and then all the turn order is going to flip, and you're going to basically reverse the turn order. <coughs> and that's going to happen before any actual actions take place in the game. Okay, so then the other thing is, is that we're all going to start at one on the notoriety track. This is a notoriety track. Uh, we start at one, which means that we're not very well known, and it's going to go up to six. Okay, so let me back up. What is the point of this game? Uh, we all robbed a bank or something. Doesn't matter. Uh, we are, um, we got away with it. So we came away with a lot of cash, and we've been laundering money throughout town, okay? So we got money invested in... Uh, these six different businesses. So the casino, the cocktail bar, the restaurant. Don't use the lock side. That's a lock side. The restaurant, the gym, the disco, and or I'm sorry, the nightclub and the um, and the art gallery. So we have money all throughout town. Uh, those are our primary places where we've laundered our money, and. Um, Basically, somebody tipped off the cops. The cops are getting on to us. And even though we all work together to commit the robbery, we now need to get out of Dodge. We've split up our money. We're not friends anymore. Uh, it's not that we're enemies either, but, but um, it's every man for himself. Okay? This is not a co-op game. 
so, um, so we, we need to get out and we have three days to escape. Um, you might ask, can you escape before the three days? I, I actually would need to check the rules. I guess you can, but it's the most stupid thing you would ever want to do. Um, I'm sure somebody will write and give me a reason why it's not stupid, but um, we're not doing that. You escape on the third day. Let's just leave it at that. Um, so uh, every day has um, a sequence to it. And so uh, during the day, there's going to be a uh, step one here. There's going to be get income. We're going to reveal patrol cards. And then in turn order, we're going to play city tiles. Then we're going to adjust the turn order. And then step five is where we do the most of the game. We're going to take actions, okay? Um, and then we prepare a new day. All right, so when it is our turn to do the actions, which is the step five, there's a morning, there's an afternoon, and there's an evening. So you're going to get to do three actions a day. So this game has nine total actions in it. That's it. It seems like an awful lot goes on in just those nine actions. But, but you do. You only get nine actions. Now, if you happen to get one of these little bonus tokens... Then what happens is, is you can take extra actions during the two evening phases, okay? So you could potentially take two bonus actions in one given day, <coughs> assuming you figure out how to get those bonus tokens, which you can do. It's not that hard to do, but um, anyways. Um, so that's the theme, and that's the, the gist of it, okay? So... Uh, we can go ahead and get started, I believe. So, um, uh, I, I guess we could go through the rules fairly quickly. Um, so on a given, uh, so you collect your income, which I said is here, and it could get progressively worse. Um, when we reveal, uh, so there's three exits in the game. There's one, two, and three. Um, we don't know which of those exits is going to be open on day three. The police are going to close off two of the three exits, okay? The exits are not at this location. This is just a, a representation of the exit. The actual exit is going to be on those tiles that we're going to reveal, the A, B, C, D tiles. So one of them is going to have exit one, another one will have exit two, etc. So wherever we put the tiles, that's where the actual physical exit's going to be on the map. Um... <clears throat> Actually, that this we can get into more of the explanation because during setup, I forgot an important step. We have a baggie here that are full of cups. So we have to draw two cups for every tile. The hospital tile never has police on it, by the way. So see, I just drew two black. So you can never have two of the same colored cup. Uh, now, one color represents federal, another represents state, and another one represents local. It's something like, like thematically, that's what they represent, but game-wise, it doesn't matter. It's red, blue, black. That's all you need to know. Uh, but since I have two of the same color, I get to remove one. This is actually good news for us. Uh, more cops on the board is bad, okay? So, uh, that's the first thing. The next thing I forgot to do is we have to reveal the top of all four of these tiles. And you can see exit three was already revealed right here. See, that's exit three. <clears throat> okay, and so when you reveal the tiles, you always put two cups on each one. And as long as they're different colors, they stay... See, that one's two of the same. Excuse me. All right. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so next... Okay, so let's uh, just continue with the rules explanation. When it's your turn, uh, I'll explain the steps as we play. Uh, but when it's your turn, you basically get to rest or you get to move, okay? Most of the game, you're going to move. Some players will never rest the entire game, okay? Um, when you move, you get three movement points. 
And, and the way it works is it's always cost one movement point to leave a location, which are these circles. Um, so I can go, for example, here for one movement point, here for a second movement point, and here for a third. Now there's, actually that was a bad example. Let's just do it this way. One, two, three. Okay. However, I have to end my turn at a location, so that would have been illegal. So let me back up again. Now I can go one, right? And then since this is all the same terrain type, it's all one location. So then I can go two and go to the gang hideout, or I can go to two to the grocery store. Okay, so you already learned one key aspect. Um, if there's a contiguous um, terrain type, it's considered all one movement point. It could go from one end of the map all the way to the other. As long as it's one terrain type that's touching each other, uh, that's considered one movement point. And you might be thinking, wow, that's awesome, that's broken. Uh, not necessarily, because here's the issue. Anytime you leave a tile, and we're talking these tiles here, uh, you have to avoid the police. These police are not on a particular location or terrain type. They're in the tile. So if, let's say there was a tile here, and I wanted to move to that tile location, I now have to avoid the black cop. It doesn't matter what terrain type I was on. So I have to figure out how to avoid that black cop, or I take a wound. And the wounds are represented by these three little white cubes, so I would move the wound token over, and you can see I have room to take three wounds. If I were to take a fourth wound, I actually heal one, but then I take this little handcuff, and it goes on my player board on the rightmost spot. And um, it may not be <clears throat> apparent right away, but that's, that's really crappy. Okay, so the first thing is, for every wound I have, see this little red number here? That's negative points at the end of the game. So if I end the game with three wounds, I'm losing 60 points. Uh, that's a large number of points for end game scoring. And then this here, these blue numbers, are end game points as well. So if I get contacts, which are these guys, and I can put them on my board, and I can fill it up all the way, you can see I'll have 100 points at the end of the game. So contacts are important. These little asset tiles are very helpful. However, they're also hurting us right now, because right now I only have room for two contacts. If I want a third contact, i got to figure out a way to unlock this asset and get it off my board. Then that opens up a room. If I were to get a handcuff tile, this is permanently out of the game, and if I had an asset tile under it, I would lose that forever. But more importantly, I could never score the 100 points anymore. And if I ever get three and then get a fourth wound again, it just keeps, the handcuffs just keep filling up the whole thing. Uh, you might be wondering what happens if you get a, all handcuffs all the way to here. I, I honestly think from that point on, you can take as many wounds as you want. I, I didn't bother looking it up in the rules. It's a ridiculous, weird situation. Um, but trust me, if you're if you've got handcuffs all the way across, you're not winning the game. So if you think you're cheating by taking advantage of now, I can have infinite wounds. Go for it, buddy. This is like Special Olympics time for you. If that's uh, <laughs> you're, we're we're, we're going to be cheering you on. <laughs> so uh, let's go with that. Um, okay, so that's how movement uh, essentially works. Uh, we'll talk about it more as I'm playing the game. Uh, but the various locations, you're going to have locations in the game. For example, see this? This is a business location. When this tile goes on the board, we get to choose what business that tile represents. So I'll be able to say, okay, I want it to be the casino, and I would put this on. And so in doing that, um, that's going to represent where the, um, the businesses are on the board. Um, the uh, safe houses are those little red uh, pentagons there. And then, as I said, exit three is already revealed way up at the top. <clears throat> that uh, doesn't always happen. Uh, as you can see, there it was an A, B, C, D. There's three tiles each. Uh, they're just shuffled. And so every game, they're going to come out in a different order. Um, obviously, we know that A has ex exit three. I mean, at some point, I guess you can start memorizing that, that the A tile has exit three. I don't know what advantage that gives you, other than knowing that um, exit three is there. But... But I mean, these get revealed before they end up on the board. So you always know what's coming and you can plan your game accordingly, okay? Um, <clears throat> I think the rest of this is we're just gonna jump in. 
Now I do have the rule book open because when Sandra takes her turn and when Bob, and actually it's Lieutenant Costa. So we're still gonna call him Bob because you know Bob Costas, right, from the, the news or the sports guy, the, the one who always tries to be political and says stupid things. Um, <clears throat> this is Bob. So uh, he's a corrupt cop, just like Bob Costas is a corrupt news reporter. <laughs> and, um, and so uh, anyways, we'll, uh, we'll call him Bob. Bob does get his own escape plan, okay? So I haven't explained what this is yet. We're not allowed to look at Bob's escape plan. This is just a little secret escape plan we're just gonna set off to the side. At the end of the game, we'll reveal it and see what he gets points-wise. Um, for us, we do get one, and I'll reveal it right now. This is just like, there's a lot of games that use this kind of mechanic, but, but basically these numbers are going to be different for every player. So you can see here that the casino is going to get me uh, income, whereas bar and restaurant gives me in-game points. Okay, remember, this is, we're trying to get our laundered money out. So if I visit the casino, I'm going to get some cash in my pocket right away that's going to help me to escape the city. These two is me taking my laundered money and moving it to a Swiss bank account so I can, once I leave town, this money will be available for me after I leave town, if that makes sense. Um, now, why are they different colors? Uh, if I complete this set up here, I get a bonus. If I complete this set, I get another bonus. And then this set is a third bonus, okay? That's the only reason why they're separated by colors. And we can get into that in a, in a second, but the safe houses, uh, have different rules than the businesses, but they also have want money that, you know, set aside for you. And they give you those keys, which we haven't talked about, but the keys let you unlock safes, and the safes are at these stores. So you see there's a little store there, and every store has a green, black, or brown safe. You can unlock those safes using the keys that you get from the various safe houses. So there's a sequence to this game. You gotta do A before you can do B, and then you gotta do B before you can do C, okay? All throughout, uh, you could be gaining notoriety. Notoriety, of course, is the cops getting onto you and figuring out that you're somebody of suspicion. So as your notoriety goes up, you actually lose end game points. Now, um, I will tell you that the winner of every game I've ever played is the one who had the most notoriety. So the guy losing 100 points at the end of the game has so far won every time. It seems counterintuitive, but there's things that you get with a lot of notoriety that those of us who try to stay down here don't get. And it is balanced, because I think it is possible to beat these people. Um, remember, we've only played a couple of games, so it doesn't mean we're good at it. Um, but the person who shot up to here clearly had an advantage over the rest of us. And like I said, they've won every time. Um, I don't think that that's possible if you have players who know what they're doing. I think it is possible you could, you could um, win staying down here, but uh, it'll become more apparent to you as we play. I honestly don't know as a solo player how I wanna play this, um, but uh, I'll, I'll get into it as we go. Now these lines just represent that if your notoriety goes above a certain spot, um, things are gonna happen. And that's what that represents. All right, so I think that's enough. I, uh, like I said, Paul from uh, Gaming Rules uh, goes through all the rules in detail. I'm just gonna explain as I play. I think that's better. Uh, with it being a solitaire game, uh, it, it actually is gonna work out pretty nice. Um, the solitaire rules for this seem quite decent, to be quite honest with you. Um, uh, we're going to find out how much of a challenge it is. Uh, this Bob is a real jerk. Um, he does things to us, um, and uh, we don't like him. <clears throat> so uh, Bob's going to be a jerk, and Sandra is a jerk too. She's actually a cop. So uh, that's why I said she doesn't score points at the end of the game. Uh, but she's a cop, and uh, so she creates problems for us. But Bob is a corrupt cop. That's the reason why we're competing against him. He was in on the, on the heist, and he's got his own laundered money. And um, since he's also a cop, he's going to cause us extra problems uh, while we're playing. Um, okay, 
that sums it up. Video one, we'll see you at video two. Thanks for watching. Stay awesome.